If you're somebody that has watched this channel for a while, you know that my disdain for social media and most internet companies is very apparent. Except for you, YouTube. <laughs> Social media doesn't create anything. It's just a public forum to follow people you agree with and to be mean to people you don't through the veil of anonymity. Two years after I quit social media, here's how I feel. 95% of teens in the US have access to smartphones. A toxic environment for teens. 90% of 18 to 29 year olds are on social media. Studies show that too much time on social media apps can be linked to anxiety and depression. Be diagnosed and treated for internet addiction. If you're not paying for a service, you are the product for sale. I feel like the sample sizes of a week or 30 days, or even six months, it's not quite large enough to encapsulate how much better I feel compared to somebody who uses social media on a daily basis. I wanna be completely open and honest. The only social media that I use anymore is watching videos on YouTube, and I have a Facebook account, but I only exclusively use that to go on Facebook Marketplace, and I unfollowed everybody. I've made a video about that link down below. Two years after I quit social media, I constantly feel happier. I'm generally a pretty happy person, but ever since I quit social media, I never have those heart drop moments that I do on social media or that I did on social media, whether that be Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I never get the feeling of anger that I used to get when I would read something from somebody that I disagree with and I think was an idiot and I couldn't believe that they would even say that. I never get that feeling anymore. I just sort of exist in this world of not pure happiness because I definitely have ups and downs, but my mood isn't altered by some basically anonymous random person with a random icon of some anime character. I find myself much more able to enjoy the smaller things in life, whether that be time with my family, even just something as simple as making my wife laugh or watching my wife laugh, or going to Chipotle and listening to my favorite music and just enjoying the moment. I'm much more present, I'm much more in the moment, I'm much more engaged with the people I'm talking with, I'm not on my phone as much. I feel like I can be there with them and I can experience everything and five years ago, I wasn't like that. I was always on my phone. I was always checking something. I was never really in the moment. And nowadays, I'm there. And no matter what people say, I'm always there. I'm always present. And I can always communicate with them in a much more effective way because I'm not constantly messaging somebody else and, and trying to multitask between five different apps. I find myself much more in control of my destiny. And I don't feel like there's some overarching, I don't know, evil entity controlling everything that I do. When you're on social media, it's such a negative platform because it feels like a platform where you're constantly getting told that there's something in society holding you back or holding this back or convincing you of this or convincing you of that. It's just a negative place. There's not a lot of positive ideas on any social media platform. And I find myself feeling like I'm much more in control of my destiny. I feel like when I made the documentary, I didn't make it for anybody else. I made it for me. I made it because it was something I wanted to do. I wanted to challenge myself. I didn't make it so I could change my Twitter bio and say documentarian. I don't, I don't really even talk about it that much. I kind of, sometimes I forget that I made it. <laughs> there was a six month stretch where somebody asked me about it and I was like, oh yeah, I, I forgot. It. I haven't even thought about that in so long. So I, I do things for me now, not for other people. And along that note, I find it significantly harder to make YouTube videos. I think if you've followed this channel, you know that I've severely lacked in my YouTube video making ability recently. I've definitely fallen back in love with it over the last, I would say, month. I pushed myself to make more and I find myself just really enjoying the process again and getting down and making the video, staying up late, grinding, taking the B-roll, coming up with the ideas, writing the scripts. I find myself falling back in love with it, but I do feel like back in the day, I wasn't making YouTube videos for the right reason. I was able to make so many because I felt like I had to because I wanted to gain subscribers, I wanted to get views, and I wanted the money that comes along with it. That I'm just being completely honest, that's what I wanted. But even something just as simple as my subscriber count, I tell people I'm roughly around 10,000 because I don't know, I never know what I'm at. I think, I actually just checked and I'm at 9,551 subscribers-ish. But if you would have asked me three years ago or two years ago how many subscribers I have, I could have told you probably down to within five because I just checked within the last half hour and it probably hasn't changed that much. That's completely changed now. I never even know when a video does well. It was a surprise to me that one of my YouTube shorts got like kind of popped off for a half second, the Jack of all trades YouTube shorts. I was, it was surprised that it popped off and I was like, oh, 
I forgot I made that. <laughs> it was like, I just enjoyed making it. I posted it and then I can just sort of leave it at that. I'm not constantly checking my phone. I set these videos to post on a, on a specific schedule and then I just can walk away and it'll be five hours later the next day when it actually posts and I'll be like, oh yeah, I posted a video. I wonder how that's doing. <laughs> and so I think that that has definitely helped me out a lot because I'm, I'm making it for me, not for anybody else. The interesting thing is, is when people say that they do that, their views typically go up. For me, the views have gone down. So I guess that's just how it is. <laughs> Social media is just a void. Nothing good comes from it. It's predominantly only negative. I'm sure people have examples of some good coming from it, but mostly speaking, social media is a vacuum. It's a void. You put goodness in and evil is returned to you. And the only one I really find acceptable is YouTube. I've learned so much about so many different things. To me, YouTube is like short form books, which I really enjoy. I try to make sure my content isn't complete garbage. So I try to really focus on just watching stuff that I really enjoy, whether that be Steph Curry teaching me how to shoot a jump shot or whether that be uh, this guy teaching me how to fix the engine of my tractor for my lawnmower. There's so many different things that you can learn on YouTube and, and there's no there's no real niche of it. It's not just like only tech videos. It's, it's everything. You can learn how to build a mining rig and in the same in the next video you could learn how to disassemble a, a tractor engine it's incredible what you can learn on the youtube platform because i think a 10 minute video can convey ideas much more effectively than a 140 character message i think the reason that books exist is because good ideas take more than two sentences to convey even this video alone will never truly convey all of my disdain that i have for social media and all the platforms my gripe is not specifically with the internet as a whole i think that the amount of information that's available is remarkable. If you would have told somebody in the 1500s, like Leonardo da Vinci in the 1500s, that you could have this much information available, he'd probably say that I was lying. Even when you think about the Library of Alexandria, how much information was stored there, there's probably more information posted on Reddit in a short, tiny hour window than there was in the entire Library of Alexandria. Okay, so because I'm a bit of a loser and I just had to know exactly how much information was lost at the burning of the Library of Alexandria. I got a lot of information here pulled up. So <laughs> according to Wikipedia, the estimates vary somewhere between 40,000 and 400,000 scrolls, which is perhaps equivalent to roughly 100,000 books. So then I had to go to the next page and I had to search how many gigabytes of data is in the average book. And it comes out to be about one megabyte worth of data according to multiple different resources uh, about right here, about one megabyte worth of data. So 100,000 megabytes is equivalent to 100 gigabytes. And according to this website, every second there's about 158,000 gigabytes of internet traffic, which means that roughly in the burning of the Library of Alexandria, the, an event that some historians believe pushed the human race back potentially a thousand years, in one second on the internet, 158 times that information that was lost at the Library of Alexandria is produced on the internet. Is the information that's produced every second on the internet nearly as good? No, not even close. I mean, this video might be, but most everything else is complete garbage compared to what was lost at the Library of Alexandria. My gripe is not with the internet as a whole, just with some of the platforms people choose to use on it. We have a catalog of information that dwarfs the Library of Alexandria, yet we choose to use it to argue about nonsense. If you use Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Reddit, and others, I implore you to delete your accounts and take a break. Not just take a break, delete it permanently. Get all your information off. Don't just pause your Instagram account, delete it, get rid of it. Don't sign into it, delete your password, change your password to some nonsense and then delete it and never access your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Reddit account ever again, because I can guarantee you nothing good can come from those platforms. Nothing good can come from having a Facebook account. You will be in the moment more, you will enjoy life a lot more, and I promise you, you will be significantly happier. One of my favorite quotes is by Henry David Thoreau. I've actually mentioned this in a video before, and it's most men lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still inside them. Do not be a blip on the radar of the internet. Spend your time with your wife, have children, build great things, and get off social media because when you are on your deathbed, you'll die with regrets and you'll die with your song still inside you. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate you watching it. And now that the video's over, I implore you to please delete everything. 
delete all the apps off your phone right now. Thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. I'm probably the only content creator dumb enough to tell you to delete the app that you're watching. Maybe YouTube probably won't push this video so hard.